let's have a chat about electronic sewing machines. If you're buying a sewing machine for the very first time, this is probably the type of machine that you're going to go for. They're affordable and they're easy to use. And nowadays, even electronic machines are a lot more than just a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. So let's have a look at this Toyota Oikaki and have a look at the stitches that it has. It does have a few decorative stitches, so these are a couple of satin stitches, and then the stitches that you need are the straight stitches. This little dot in the oval depicts the needle position, so I've got the needle to the left-hand side so I can sew zips in, and then in the centre. And then I've got different widths of zigzag stitches, blind hemming stitches. If you see something with a lot of zigzags like this one, then that's for a stretch fabric, so that's a blind hem for stretch fabric. So you can still adjust things like sweatshirts and polo shirts and do repairs on school uniforms. This one's called a serpentine stitch, which can be decorative, or you can use that as a mending stitch. And this one is perfect for sewing in elastic, because although it's a zigzag, it puts a little dot, a little stitch, in between the points of the zigzag, so your elastic won't pull through. On an electronic sewing machine, you've probably got a four-step buttonhole. So unlike the computerized machine that measures the size of your button, you have to measure the size of your button and stop sewing when you've finished one side, do the bar tack at the end, which is the letter N here, and then sew down the other side. We'll have a look at that in just a second. This one's a straight stitch for stretch fabric, a triple straight stitch. And what it does is basically do a back stitch, so two stitches forward and one stitch backwards. So if you're hemming or repairing something like a polo shirt, or a sweatshirt or anything on jersey fabric, this stitch will stretch, whereas your straight stitch won't, it'll snap. Then we've got more decorative stitches, over edging stitches to help stop your fabric from fraying. And although with electronic machines they will vary on the amount of stitches that you have, these are the basic stitches that you can probably choose from. And to choose them, you'll notice above each stitch we have a letter which coordinates with the letters around the dial here. So all you need to do is to choose the stitch by having the letter at the top and then you can hear that clicking into place and that chooses your stitch. Now with an electronic sewing machine, you won't find that the needle stops up or down. It'll stop somewhere in between or wherever it happens to be when you stop sewing. So before you turn the dial, make sure that the needle is up. I'll show you that later on. But as you turn the dial, the needle will move from side to side to choose the stitch. You can bend the needle if it's in the down position. As we come up to the side here, some electronic machines have this dial, some don't. This is a stitch length stitch, so I can go all the way down to zero, which means that the feed teeth underneath the machine are not going to move the fabric. Why would you want that? Well, for sewing on buttons, that comes in very handy. And you can adjust the width all the way to five millimeters, which is quite a long tacking stitch. You probably use between two and a half and three for most of the time. Let's take a walk across the top of the machine to the tension dial. Now sometimes this is on the top of your machine, sometimes it's on the front. Computerized or electronic, it all works in the same way. You'll have three numbers highlighted. That's the average setting that you're going to use for most of your fabrics. So if you are a beginner, leave it here. If you're going to experiment with different types and weights of fabric, you may need to adjust that slightly. But certainly for your first few projects, don't worry about your tension. Normal threading system, you'll find the majority of sewing machines brings you down to the needle here. Sometimes with electronic machines you have a needle threader. This one does. Sometimes you don't. You'll need to thread that manually. So let's choose one of the decorative stitches and I'm going to go for, let's go for A because that's a lovely satin stitch which gives a scalloped edge. So I'll put, put my foot on the foot pedal and away we go. Now all you're going to do with your um, fabric is to feed it through slowly. Keep it as flat as you can. Sometimes with um, a decorative stitch like this, you may want to put a little bit of stabiliser behind it to help stop your fabric from puckering. And do have a play on a spare piece of fabric um, of the same as your project because when you start to adjust the width and the length of the stitch, you will get completely different looks. So just make sure that you have the stitch that you want before you commit to your project. So you can see very tight, very loose stitches, and then, just like Goldilocks said, perfectly right in the centre. Let's take a look at the four-step buttonhole. The four-step stitches on this machine are L, M, N and O. Obviously, all machines are going to be different. You may have numbers, you may have different letters, but the four-step buttonhole works in just the same way. So the L and the N are actually the bar tacks, and those are the, the end bits of your buttonhole. And then M and O are the two side bits. So M is going to go backwards, N goes across the top, and O comes down the other side. 
The foot that you're going to use is this one. This doesn't measure the size of your buttons, but it does have a little gauge on the side. So I can take the button that I'm using and measure that against those two bars. So I can see that I need to start at this one and finish at that one, and that should give me the right size for my button. So to choose the stitches, I'm going to turn the dial again, and the first one I need to use is the first one in the row, which is L. And that'll give me the bar tack, which goes over the end. And on this machine, N and L are actually the same stitch. So when you choose N later on, you still go back to that same point on the dial. All electronic sewing machines are going to be different in that respect, so do check on your manual first of all. So let's take the foot off that's on the machine at the moment. And most machines will have snap-on, snap-off feet with a lever at the back that you simply drop down the foot and take that away and then my buttonhole foot goes on. Make sure it's the right way around, and you can tell it's the right way around because if I did it the wrong way around, where the needle goes, it will actually break because it'll hit the foot. So make sure that you've got clearance for the needle on this side. That's an easy way to tell you've got it right. So we simply drop the take-up lever onto the foot across that metal bar and pop my fabric underneath. Then we'll go back up to the dial, and I've chosen, remember, that stitch L, and start to sew. Now I'm in control of when I start and when I stop. With the computerized machine it will work automatically. With this machine I'll do a few stitches left and right and then I'll stop. Now you'll notice that the needle stopped almost touching the fabric so I'll need to turn the hand wheel towards me until the needle is in the uppermost position before I choose the second stitch. My second stitch is going to be stitch number M so all I do is just turn the dial around to M and we'll start to zigzag down the second side. I'll need to remember where that mark was where I needed to stop, which was the second long line on the side of the foot. And when I stop, the needle again is in the uppermost position. I'll need to do the bar tack at the second end by turning the dial back round to N, which is the same as L. And then go over a few times at the end. That's just a zigzag stitch. Turn the wheel so that the needle is in the uppermost position. And then the final stitch is O, which will take the zigzag stitch back down to where I started. So like with, unlike with a computerized machine, which will probably have one step button holes, which start and stop without you having to do anything at all, this time you do. So you need to watch your stitch, see where you need to start and see where you need to end and then stop sewing. And then just like with your computerized machine, you'll take your quick and pick and there we go and snip through the hole in the center to make your perfect buttonhole. So although it might be a little bit more time consuming if you've already seen the video for computerized machines and how a one-step buttonhole works, if you're not planning on a career in dressmaking and tailoring for the amount of buttonholes you probably need, this is going to be fine for you. Electronic machines tend to be a lot more affordable they're not as basic as they used to be in the 50s and 60s. You have stitches for different types of fabric, and some of them can be really robust and capable of sewing through heavy weights of fabric, like denim and canvas as well. So do have a shop around. Have a look at the differences. The main thing with the electronic machines, I think, is going to be the amount of stitches you have on the machine. And that can vary from three or four all the way through to maybe 15 or 16 stitches. And, of course, that will affect the price that you're going to pay for your sewing machine as well. Thank <laughs> you.